manipulating uh, the equation of the list to its uh, standard form when you graph it, one of the things you're going to have to do to get it into that form is to put it the square. So just as a reminder of how this works, uh, the basic idea is that I I want to I want to make this binomial right here, or this you know there will be a trinomial once I add this piece here. I want to make it into a, a perfect square so that when I factor it, it just becomes x plus or minus something squared. And so I've got to figure out what piece to put here, and then. I need to do the same thing in, in this space because I can't just add random numbers into, into an equation without changing its quality. So what I'm going to do, just so you can see how it's going to work first, is I, I want to put a 16. And when I do that, I'm also going to need to put a negative 16 in them here so that they cancel each other out, right? So that by, by, adding, by adding this and adding this, I'm not changing the value of the left side of the equation because I'm only adding and subtracting the exact same thing. Now, the reason this 16 was chosen is because I take this value right here, so this negative 8, and I want to divide it by 2, which gives me negative 4, and then I take that value and square it to get 16. So the way we write that is it's going to be, if this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, then this right here, this is the B value, right? So that matches up. So if I were to list, you know, what's happening right here is I'm taking B, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. And that's where, that's where this number is coming from. The advantage of doing that is that when I factor it, x squared minus 8x plus 16, it factors to x minus 4 squared. Now, this... You know, it may seem complicated trying to think of this on your own, but the thing is that because because we created it by putting this number in here, by putting the 16, and, and using this formula to get it, it's going to factor the same way every time. You're just going to have to take this variable right here, it comes into that spot, and then you take whatever sign this is here and put it into that spot, and then you just take this number and you square root it. To put it into this spot here. So the square root of 16 is 4. Um, hopefully that makes sense. We'll, we'll do another one too. You know, to see how that works. But that's the basic idea. And then over here, you just deal with this part. You know, nothing special. It just becomes minus 28 is equal to 0. So this is our new, our new expression is going to look like this. Now, sometimes you're doing this because you're trying to solve for x. Sometimes you're doing it because you're trying to change the form of an equation. If I were trying to solve for x, I would probably want this over on the other side, but I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to turn it into this, you know, different shape of this equation. And so I'm going to skip that step. I'm going to leave everything over here on the left side for now. So let's look at it again with this one. We'll do kind of the same idea. I, I, you know, I like to leave blanks in mine when I write it out, but before I can put those blanks in, this one's a little bit different because I have a coefficient here in front of the in front of the x squared. So what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to treat I'm going to treat this section of the problem like it's it's just one separate piece over here. And so I'm just going to rewrite it with the three on the outside, and then I'll have x squared minus four x now, and then I'll put my my blank in here. And then I still have minus 21 minus blank is going to be equal to 0. I'll use my same technique. So if I take this negative 4, I'll take negative 4 divided by 2 squared. This is going to give me a positive 4. That's what's going to go in here. But then this spot is a little bit tricky. Because remember, the whole idea of this space is that what I'm putting inside of here is the thing that's going to keep this equation, this uh, equality statement true. I, I can't change the left side of the equation. And so by putting a 4 in here, with this 3 on the outside, I've actually put in 12, right? Because this would be distributed. Uh, if I distributed the 3, I would get 3x squared, which I have, and then minus 12x, which I have, but then also plus 12. That's what came out of nowhere. 
So if I'm going to add 12 over here, I also have to subtract 12 over here. So I've got my, I already put negative on here, so I've got minus 12 and minus 5. Um, then I can use my same technique of, of factoring. I still have my 3. I know I'm going to have something squared, and it's going to be this variable, x. It's going to use this sign right here, minus, and then I'll take the square root of 4, which is 2. That goes in that spot, and then I just combine those two together to be negative 33. Um, again, it would be different if you were trying to solve for x, but we're actually just trying to manipulate the equation. So let me just do one example where you can see how this actually works with our, um, you know, our system where we're going to make this into an ellipse. So what I would like to do is root together uh, x squared plus 6x in one spot, and then I'm going to have plus 4y squared minus 8y, and I will actually move the not line over to the other side. So I think negative over here. If I look at this blue part, I'm going to have x squared plus 6x plus blank. Then with the red part, I'm going to have to deal with the 4 like we did in the other one. So I'll have y squared minus 2y plus blank, and that's going to be equal to our negative 9 over here, but I've got two blanks, but I kind of I need to push over here to balance out what I've done on the left side, I need to balance that out over on the right side. So if I think about what's going to fill in these spots, I, I know that I'm going to take half of 6 is 3, and if I square that, I get 9. Over here, if I take half of 2, or half of negative 2, that's a negative 1, and negative 1 squared is just 1. And then I plug in my values on this side. Well, over here, I increase this value by 9, so I have to put that in. Over here, I put in a 1, but remember, I also had this 4 out here. So I actually have to put a plus 4 in that space. Then I can go ahead and factor this. So over here, I know I'm going to get something squared. Same thing's going to happen over here. And this is all going to be equal to 4. Because negative 9 plus 9 plus 4 is just 4. I use my technique we talked about. I take this variable, this sign, and the square root of this number. Same thing over here. This variable, this sign and the square root of this number, and I've got my, my system in place. Uh, now, the last little piece is that I know in all of the standard forms of the ellipses that, that we've looked at, this number over here, this has always been a 1, not a 4. So I want to make it into a 1 by dividing it by 4. To do that, I have to divide everything by 4. And that gives me my whole, my, my new equation is going to be x plus 3 squared over 4 plus, those will cancel out, so I've got uh, y minus 1 squared. You can put it over 1 if it makes you feel better. But we don't need to do that. And this is all equal to 1. So this is now the equation of an ellipse. And we can see there's, there are a lot of pieces. You know, now that we know, I can see that it's, it's horizontal because this is A, right? And the big number matches up with X, so that's what makes it horizontal. I can see that H is equal to negative 3. And while we're there, we might as well point out the K is equal to 1. This is B, uh, or you know, B, sorry, I should go, this is squared, this is B squared. It's going to be equal to 1. Uh, and I think that's all, that's all the information we really need to put this thing together. So if I were to think about this ellipse, I know it's going to be horizontal. I know that this distance is going to be, if I have A equals 2, it's 2A across here, so this distance is going to be 4. 
I know that this distance is going to be 2 B, right? B is equal to 1, and so that distance would be 2. So, and I know that this center right here is going to have the coordinates negative 3, 1. Uh, let's draw that. Um, but anyway, th those are all the all the things I did not know about this ellipse. And uh, this is actually the graph right here. So here's negative three one. We can see, sure enough, this distance is two. The entire distance across here is four, just like we suspected. This distance is two. This is my distance is one. All of our pieces are in place to graph this thing.